Hey everyone, my name is Jacob and I want to tell you about OpenFund and how you can use it to raise money from anybody on the internet. You could use OpenFund to raise money for a startup, a podcast or YouTube video series, to fund a movie or video game, or really any other idea that requires some initial capital up front to get started. I'll walk you through how to get started on OpenFund both as an investor and a project founder. And the easiest way to explain OpenFund is to dive in and explore some of the projects currently raising money on the platform. So when you head over to OpenFund.com, you can either scroll to the bottom of the homepage or select Discover here at the top. And from here, you'll see some of the featured projects here at the top, and you can browse every project listed on the OpenFund platform here at the bottom. And you can sort the different projects from price to market cap by volume in the last 24 hours, the total amount raised, the amount raised in the last day, the last week, number of hodlers, and the date created. If we sort by the amount raised in the last seven days and we want to take a closer look at a certain project, we can go ahead and click on it here. When you get to a specific projects profile page, you have a ton of different options to explore. You can take a look at the token price here in the top right. You get some fundraising round information, the total amount raised, the total supply of the tokens, the number of holders. Uh, if you were to hold the token, you'd see your ownership stake here. You can see some of the top holders here in the left, some social links, as well as referral information here on the left. So one of the really cool features of OpenFund is the built-in referral program. So investors can copy their own personalized link and send it out to friends. And if anyone signs up using that link and invests in the project, then that original person gets a percentage of the amount invested. And when you scroll down here, you get a better look at the project's mission, team, business model, and a little bit more of a background in the project description. And once you've taken a look at a project and you're ready to invest in it, you can go ahead and hit contribute to project, or you can scroll down here to the contribute option. OpenFund is blockchain agnostic, so you have the option to invest in any project using Ethereum, Bitcoin, Solana, DSO, USDC, or DSO dollars. And if you'd like to invest using Ethereum, you can actually connect your MetaMask and invest directly that way. If you'd rather invest with another crypto like Solana, all you have to do is send your soul to this wallet address here and you'll automatically get DSO dollars in return that you can use to go ahead and invest in the project. So I actually have some DSO in my wallet that I'll look to convert over to DSO dollars. So we'll say $5 worth of DSO that we want to convert. And just like that, after a few seconds, we can see that my swap of 0.5 DSO was successfully converted over to five DSO dollars. So now we'll choose the maximum amount we can invest into the project, which is about $6. And in return, we'll get 600 Starcrawler tokens. And now I'm ready to contribute. So I'll hit contribute and get tokens. And just like that, after signing a quick transaction, I now have 600 Starcrawler tokens in my wallet. And after you contribute to a project, you'll receive the tokens that you can trade on OpenFund's non-custodial on-chain order book exchange. So to get to that exchange, we can scroll back up here to the top and select trade. And you can also use the secondary exchange to purchase tokens if a funding round on a project has already been closed. On this page, you'll be able to find information of over 2,000 tokens that are currently trading on the exchange. And we're taking a look at the open fund token and we can see the price chart here. And on the right, we can see some active traders as well as some active bid and ask prices on the token. If we scroll down here to the middle, we can see the option to buy or sell using market orders or limit orders. And over on the left, we can search for different tokens if we want to. And if we scroll down a little bit further to the bottom here, we can see the activity happening with the open fund token because everything's on chain. We can see every single transaction taking place. So you can search by different users or different projects if you would like. And here under open orders, you can see any orders you have if you're looking to buy or sell the open fund or any token. And lastly, we have trades to show you any trades that have been made. Um, from your wallet and if you want to navigate over to your wallet you can scroll back up here and hit wallet so in the wallet is where you'll find any tokens that you have purchased as well as received uh, since I just invested in the fundraising round the star crawler tokens are here in the receive tab if you've gotten any referrals you can also view that information here as well and you can also see that you have your DSO balance listed here and your USD or DSO dollar balance listed as well. This will be where you manage your treasury as a project founder, but we'll talk about that in more detail here in a few minutes. And of course, you can also buy or send any DSO or DSO dollars at any time straight from your wallet as well. So you now know how to use OpenFund as an investor. Let's take a look at how to use OpenFund as a project founder. We'll go ahead and navigate back to the homepage. So we're back on the homepage here, and what we'll do is hit start your project. And once you've started the project, first thing is just enter an email to get some notifications. And the next thing you'll do is set up your project profile, which involves uploading a profile picture, setting a username and a quick tagline to give your project elevator pitch. And for all my Top Gun fans out there, we'll make a profile as Maverick. 
Next, you'll describe your project. So you upload a cover image to represent your project, give it a title, as well as the description. And for this example, thanks to Midjourney AI, we have this cool F18 cover art. We have our project title and shout out to ChatGPT for writing this quick project description. So you can also add social links here, your website, Discord, and Twitter if you'd like, and then hit continue. And you'll be hit with this prompt and you have two options. You can go ahead and start your project with some default funding details, or you can update those funding details yourself before you start the project. So we'll do that. So once we get to this page, we can update some settings. First, we get a link to our profile page here at the top. Next, you can choose your treasury currency. You have the options between USD and DSO. Most projects will choose USD so that they have a non-volatile asset as their treasury currency as opposed to a volatile asset like DSO. Next, you can set your fundraising goal. It can be, you know, $100, $1,000. 10,000, a million, whatever you want to choose. And this option here, if you have it selected, it will allow overflow. So if you meet your fundraising goal, you can continue to raise money after that. Otherwise, if you unselect it, once you hit your fundraising goal, then your fundraising round will be complete. Next, we have some advanced settings where you can set your token price as well as the dates that you want your fundraising round to start and end. And below that, we have the reserve rate, which most people just leave at zero. And after that, we have the referral bonus, which is where you can determine how much you want to pay out people who refer their friends and others to invest in your project. Next up, if you want your fundraising round to be exclusive or only have certain people access it, you can toggle this on to set a password in order to access your profile page. We'll turn that off. And below here, we have a bonding curve that you can set for the price of your token. So this will incentivize people to invest in your project as early as possible. For example, you could have the price of your token increase by let's say 10% for every $1,000 USD that's been invested. Or you can change that to every you know, 10 days that your token increases in price. That way it gets people more involved and want to invest earlier. And you can also set it for hours, minutes, or even seconds if you'd like. Next up is a place to upload a terms and conditions document if you would like. There's a generic one that's already preloaded, so feel free to use that. Upload your own or just leave this blank. And lastly, you can name your fundraising round. And once you're ready to go live, you can hit create round. And now your project is live. So we can follow that link back at the top here to take a look at the project profile page. So similar to the profile page we looked at earlier, you can see all the same information. You have the countdown timer, your fundraising goal, as well as the token information here, referrals, links, ownership, and the description that we talked about earlier. One important thing to note on this page is this green enable trading button. So when you start a new project, the token trading option is off by default. This is an important decision to make when you're launching a project. Do you want to hold off on allowing users to trade your token until you have made some progress on your mission? Or do you want to allow trading right away? There's really no wrong answer here. It's just something to keep in mind when you create your project. And now that your project is live and you are raising money, let's head back to your wallet real quick. So we'll navigate to the top and hit wallet. And this is where you can manage the treasury for your project. As I mentioned earlier, you could have chosen either DSO or USD to be your treasury currency. And if you did choose USD, just keep in mind, you'll need some DSO in your wallet in order to complete transactions. And one more important thing to note in your wallet is that at any time you can cash out from DSO dollars straight to USDC by hitting this cash out button here. And at any time, if you wanna make any updates to your fundraising round, you can head back to the settings tab by hitting this button here at the top. This will take you back to where you can edit your profile, your project details, or fundraising details. So here you can edit any of those fundraising details you made. And if you wanna finalize your round, you can do so here. And if you needed to refund investors, you could also do that here. And keep in mind, if you close this fundraising round, you can always open additional fundraising rounds in the future. And you'll also notice a few more tabs have popped up here on the left. First being notification preferences. This is simply where you could unsubscribe from email notifications if you chose to do so. And the next tab is proposals. So this is a really cool feature where you can run some polls or get feedback from your investors if you ever want to get their input on your project. And next up we have project distributions which are coming soon and this is where you can manage how to pay back your investors. And lastly, we can navigate here to the advanced settings. So this is where you can mint and burn your project tokens if you ever want to change the supply. And an important note here is under the token transfer restriction, the default option is only the owner can transfer and receive tokens. So these are actually the settings that disable trading on your token. If you were to ever change this to anyone can transfer and receive tokens, then that's automatically going to enable trading on your token. And on your project profile page, that green button that says enable trading, when you hit that button, this setting is actually automatically updated. So you don't ever have to come over here to advanced settings if you don't want to. And down here at the bottom, 
You can permanently disable the mincing on your project token if you would like. This would really only make sense if you told your investors that you have a hard fixed supply that you don't ever plan on changing. But keep in mind if you do disable minting then you won't be able to raise money in the future. And to be honest I just suggest avoiding the advanced settings tab in general but if you do navigate over here then proceed with caution. You are now up to speed on how to use Open Fund. It truly is the easiest way to raise money on the internet and there's nothing else like it. Best of luck to you and I look forward to seeing the projects you create.